princess of my lot. Voices of my lot. Voices of my art will evoke truth, justice, righteousness, reciprocity, balance, order, and harmony. Oh, to be conscious, gifted, and black. Conscious, gifted, and black. Masha Runefer family, I'm Queen Mother Eni Tere Aset Akua Kiti Haru with the Temple of Head Haru, and you're listening to the Voices of My Eye channel. Also, our founder of the Temple of Head Haru is Amari Sneferu. I want to acknowledge him. I also want to let you all know that the Voices of My Eye is now a channel. So please subscribe to the channel. Please like it. Also, subscribe to our Makaru 314, as well as our Paradigm Shift 314. Before I get started, as usual, I'm going to do our chant, our Hesti. I'll say that chant in Meta Netter, and then I'll translate that into English. Pa Netter, Ampu Pa Ma'at, Ank Wais De Jeb, Ank Unja Seneb, Uben Nefa Akar Pa Enbu Haru Ma'at, in English, that translates to how sweet is the truth, life, power, stability, life, prosperity, and health, rising always in divine excellence with my aunt every day, all day. Ashe. 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 And family, when we say Ashe, we simply mean that we agree and we're on the same accord. Now, tonight I have a special guest. I'm going to let him introduce himself at this time. Go yeah. ahead, King. All right, Anku Jab Sanel. Uh, before we start any demonstration, we always open up with acknowledgments and honor. Want to acknowledge the universal principle of which we are all just fragmented pieces of the whole. Want to come giving honors, giving honors to the ancestors whose soul shoulders we stand on today. We want them to know that we in this generation, we understand the price that has been paid for us to be here today. And you can rest assured that we will not allow your oppressors to write the final chapter of our history. <laughs> Understanding that to withhold honors is not only cruel, but it is unjust. Therefore, we give honors to all those who struggle for the upliftment of fallen humanity. My name is Brother Henry, and I'm just a worthy traveler trying to find truth, not stuck on labelisms or any isms, just looking for truth. And as we get truth and truth cross truth, we sharpen each other. So that's my mission. That's where I'm standing. So it's an honor to stand before you today. And we want to just um, demonstrate to the best that the universe wants us to give you. I say, I say, I say. do I? Thank you, King Brother Henry. That was excellent. Um, sure. Also, I want to make an announcement before we get started with the show. We are, we have formed the Temple of Het Haru Queen's Sister Circle Auxiliary. And we're going to go out Saturday on our first project and we are going to bless our sisters in the community who are facing homelessness, substance abuse, mental health issues and prostitution. So we will be showing them some love this Saturday and we're going to give them a self-care bag. And in that bag, it's going to have everything that they need to take care of their uh, health and just make them feel good. Because we want to let them know that we love them and we care about them and we're going to support them because our goal is to love all of our people. Ashe? Ashe. Okay, so the topic is called genocide the demise of the black people and this is going to be part one we'll have a part two tonight i'm uh, interviewing king brother henry and then in part two i will be interviewing our saber pianki pata 
Matula Nef Amon Ra, I'll be interviewing him for the part two. So again, that is called Genocide, the Demise of the Black Race. Mm. Yeah. So I'm going to get started with the questions. The All first right. question that I have, uh, King Brother Henry, is why has black on black violence and murdering one another reached massive levels compared to 60 years or so within our own communities? All right, my sister. Yeah, now that's the interesting one there. And one of the things we got to realize is that you cannot properly approach a 1960 concept with a 2020 mindset because you have to know something about a time when men and women would stay together in the hardest of times because men and women did their part to provide, protect, and nurture the family, the family structure. There's an African proverb that says, you must know where you come from to understand where you are. Yes. Therefore, you see where you're going, you see. So we got to know something about what the 60s was doing. Because in the 60s, we were about to waken up to a consciousness. We had the Black Panther Party, uh, Malcolm X. Uh, yes. Our communities was nothing more than just extended families. Uh, segregation, redlining, Jim Crow, that all forced us to just kind of click up and self-regulate. And we had limited police interaction in our community. Uh, we had black teachers, lawyers, doctors. Yeah. See, the, the, the segregation thing kept everybody lumped together. So we had black teachers, lawyers, doctors, and even business owners all living on the same block. And that 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 right there just give children some type of uh, something to identify with. I say. And that created a culture in our community, a culture of self-worth, uh, responsibility, and progress. And then we entered into what we call the late 60s and integration, civil rights of granted privileges, affirmative action, all that opened up the opportunity for those who could afford to leave our community would leave. Yeah. And yes, ma'am. And so we, you know. We, we, it opened up the door to where we could now spend money outside our community. Uh, once upon a time, we couldn't go to the mall. We had to go right in our community. They opened that door. And that door then drained the community of recycled wealth, the valuable leadership. Teach. In addition, the business, the institutions, GM, uh, Procter & Gamble, a lot of big companies made an exodus to the suburbs. And that in turn, that, that caused a decline in our property values, in, un, in, in, uh, increased unemployment, yes. and it destabilized our schools. Um, and all that opened up the door for drugs, guns, and deteriorating buildings. They call that gentrification. Yes. You see? So now you add, you add to that a materialistic generation and that generation put the quest for money over providing and protecting family values. So we evolved and out of where we were into something other because we wanted to insert ourselves into somebody else's order. So as we come out of the 60s, we drop into the 80s. The 80s brought us what? Crack cocaine, PC, mm. uh, uh, tra uh, train loads of guns and ammo dropped in every major city in the United States. You see, along with that in the 80s, you get a Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton come along with what? Three strikes you out, minimum guideline sentencing, and privatization of the prison industry. Meaning now the penal system is on the stock market. Now you couple that with what? The Justice Department. Justice Department using uh, conspiracy, uh, RICO, uh, CCE, which is Continuing Criminal Enterprise, these are all things that were labeled for the mafia and organized crime, and they began to apply that to what? The melanated population. Mm -hmm. Teach. Now, that, that right in, in itself, now, that continues the destruction of the Black families. What you got now? You got, fam you got fathers and sons, uncles and nephews, 
all kicking it on the same tier, on the same block within the within the prison system. And all this constituting is being what we call the new plantation. Yes. You still in captivity. It's a deep concept, my sister. So now we transfer into the 1990s. The 90s take us into what? Gangster rap. Gangster rap. Gangster rap, it vibrates on a show on, on a frequency. And that frequency taps into what we call our lower chakra, which is the energy center. Yes. And by tapping into that lower, that lower animal self, that then fuels the quest, our quest for what? Sex, money, and even violence toward one another. And now violence becomes the norm. And that's yes. where we are today, my sister. So I, I, just, I just want to say, you know, that, that just lays the groundation to say that this Willie Lynch concept is alive and well. You got that right. hatred itself. Right. And this, you know, so, you know, we're not our natural selves and yes. we're rotating on the axis of a lie, my sister. And that's what we have to look at. So all this is just understanding that all of this is designed to do what is to justify the genocidal removal of us as a people. As we go back to your subject matter, I Ashe. Ashe. And I want to add, um, I want to just read something. Mm -hmm. I have outlined a number of differences among the slaves. And I take these differences and make them bigger. Yes, ma'am. I use fear, distrust, and envy for control purposes. Go ahead. These methods have worked on my modest plantation in the West Indies, and it will work throughout the South. Take this simple little list of differences and think about them. On the top of my list is age, but it is there only because it starts with an A. The second is color or shade. There is intelligence, size, sex, size of plantations, status on plantations, attitude of owners, whether the slaves live in the valley, on the hill, east, west, north, south, have fine hair, coarse hair, or as tall or short. Now that you have, now that you have a list of differences, I shall give you an outline of this action. But before that, I shall assure you that distrust mm -hmm. is stronger than trust. Envy is stronger than ad 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 adulation, mm -hmm. yes, respect, or admiration. The Black slave, after receiving this indoctrination, shall carry on and will become self-refueling and self-generating for hundreds of years and maybe even thousands. Mm -hmm. yes, Don't forget, you might pitch the old Black male versus the young Black and the young Black male against the old Black male. You must use the dark-skinned slaves versus the light-skinned slaves and the light-skinned slaves versus the dark-skinned slaves. You must use the females versus the male and the male versus the female. You must also have your white servants and overseers distrust all Blacks, but it is necessary that your slaves trust and depend on us. They must love, respect, and trust only us. Gentlemen, these kits are your keys to control. Use them. Have your wives and children use them. Never miss an opportunity. If used intens intensively for one year, the slaves themselves will remain perpetually distrustful. Thank you, gentlemen. Editors repeat. This speech was delivered by the white slave owner William Lynch on the banks of the James River in 1712. Yes, ma'am. That's most profound. You know, uh, I was talking with a brother um, and he was saying that the Willie Lynch letter was not real. And I had to respond to him and say, but what you're looking at is real and it's bearing witness. They bearing witness to what we're looking at. So whether it's fictitious or not, you got to understand that our reality is basically aligned with that. Right, right. Did he have any solid proof? Or only or his just... that it didn't exist. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. And really, you know, we're at that point where we don't need proof because anything literary, 
pretty much comes out of the mind of Urugu or from our enemy anyway. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm going to move on, King Brother Henry, to question two. All right. Why do some Black people bring up the premise that we continue to kill one another when it comes to the police killing us unfairly in the mm. community, as if that makes it okay for the police to kill us? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we get that all the time, my sister. And, yes. you know, that's just another really lynch psychic. Yes. You see, and that's just bro. And what that psychic is, what did it say at the end? They must trust only us. Yes. Yeah. So, so you talking about the people when they bring that conversation up, they got more love. You got to be able to identify, or they got more love for the oppressor than they got for themselves. Yes. You see, you see and like like brother was saying, um, our language when the when the when the slave master's house catch on fire, we say, "Master, we sick," or "Master, we house burning." Yo, wow. you the born. You ain't got nothing to do with that. Absolutely. You see, you see so you know the these people that that want to echo that sentiment. You know, they just vessels of the confusion. You got to see it for what it is. Don't get mad at them. Just recognize who they are and what they represent, you see. So, you know, um, when you see them echo the sentiments of the oppressor, if you think about it, they're in the 60s. Or was it, it was the 60s. There was a rich girl named Patty Hearst who got kidnapped. Yes, I, I remember. I wasn't okay. there, but I remember the story. <laughs> and she went in and they killed the judge and everything. And she beat the case because the lawyer said that she had a disease called Stockholm disease. Mm. Stockholm disease is one where you identify with your captor. You have sympathy for the one for your oppressor. That's Stockholm syndrome. Wow. You see? And that's how she was able to beat that case, you see. So, you know, we got to see that these people just trying to divert our uh, overly emotional, traumatized people. We trying, they trying to uh, divert us from the true problem. So we got to see them as a distraction. I, I, you know, this system, you know, it knows how to manipulate our melanated power. We yeah. keep trying to see ourselves through the, see other people through our eyes. Yes. See, and this is a people who was constructed in a whole nother spirit, you see. Yes. Once you understand that, then you have to see them according to their spirit. You know, you judge a lion by a lion, snakes by snakes. You don't go around petting them. Right. For what they are, you see. I say. Yes. And so I also think that uh, when some of our people say that, they always say that, but they never have a solution. They never have what, what they propose to do or what we can do as a whole. But remember, they are not there to offer a solution. They are there to offer a diversion. There you go, Ashe. I, I'm with you, brother. Manipulating, you, you're trying to manipulate the situation and make it seem less than what it is because of your love for your oppressor. Mm, that's a great point. It go it goes straight a uh, straight back full circle, you know, yeah. So you know that's what we do. But that, look at how they do. They always use some of our own to condemn us in favor of our enemy. Yes. They all. Yeah, that's, that's been yes. happening forever. Yeah, exactly. This ain't nothing new under the sun. That's what I'm saying. Yes, ma'am. But that's, that's how right. they move. You see, and you know, if we don't impose some type of justice on these people, you know, uh, uh, as we do to one another, which is called the law of reciprocity, an eye for an eye, you know? Yes. So if we don't do something about that, then we're going to continue to be subjected to the misuse, abuse, and murder by these savage people, you see? And you got to understand that even after we take care of our external enemy, the universe would then allow us to take care of some house cleaning. I say. See, we ain't going to go after each other on some disagreements. We need to stay focused on the issue, which is these, you Gentiles assassinating our children. Yes, absolutely. And this is what, the, you know, and, and like you go back to your topic, this is another form of the genocide. Remember, genocide is the destruction of a gene. Yes, yes, teach. 
Yeah, so this is this is what we're going after. So, you know, like I say, the universe, you got to be so much in tune with the universe because the universe is always talking to you. So when it's saying you a devil is going to try to take your life, then you got to fence up. Right. It's right. mandatory. So this, it, you know, it's wartime, and that's what it is, you see. And the war is not, like they say, it ain't with the flesh and blood. We're dealing with a, a mindset. You're dealing with a system. Yes. And so we're not worried about the individual because they got blue eyes, blonde hair, and a pale complexion. But the universe had to give you a description of an open enemy. Yes. You see, the gazelle know what a lion looked like. So it know what that lion came to do. So they always on alert. I so say. That's what we got to do. We got to stay on alert, my sister. So, you know, just know that, you know, there's always going to be those that, that 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 demonstrate that Willie Lynch syndrome because the universe keep repeating this thing, throwing it back at you, but yet we keep falling in the same ditch. We have not learned the lessons of life. That's why it looked like we ain't going nowhere. Yes. All right, let me move on, brother, to uh, now, question three. Uh, do you feel that religion can play a role in the way that black people value or view themselves as others that look like them? Uh, say that again. Okay, so do you feel that religion plays a role in the way that we as black people value or view ourselves and the way that we value and view other black folks who look like us mm, yes ma'am mm -hmm. yes 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 you know that one that, <laughs> that, that, that religion is the tool of deception yes Remember, spiritual people don't need religion these spiritualized people have to have religion to supplement what they don't have because mm -hmm. we're deprived of the knowledge of self and our own spirituality, we now implement religion in its place. Yes. You see, so you got to understand the concept of religion. See, religion is just a man is a man-made doctrine. You see, and it was remember it was Constantine that perfected religion, but they did it as a political tool, a political tool to unify Rome but it was about control and domination of its own people and then the world. Yes, yes. And these, and these religions now have become what we call institutions, institutions of white supremacy, you see? Yes. Because all our religions, if you look at them, they just male dominated murder codes. You see, everything, everything in it, male dominated, yet the women support it, you see? Yes. And what what these religions do is it takes the melanated people's spirituality to give power and lies to the misunderstandings of these non-melanated people you see so our spirituality is being applied in an arena where it ain't even been in our best interest absolutely i want absolutely. to get, kind of give you an example like you know the false ideas and concepts they were given to us by our elders remember the elders trained us to go into these religions yes you see so when we you know and you know and and the the enemy use that as a means of what pacification confusion and docility meaning yes. we don't threat we non-threatening to them when we under religion you see now why does that why does that manifest you see you have to understand that in the minds of the people the greatness of like adam and eve uh Abraham and Moses, Jesus, all of them are white, all of them are European, you see. So, you know, that translates to the degradation of anything black, you see. Um, yeah. There was a, uh, even in that teaching, there's a rabbinical scholar who sold us, he sold us the concept of Ham, about Ham, the son of Ham being the cursed, uh, cursed black by God. Therefore, all his descendants are to serve that same to, uh, designed to serve the other brothers, you see. So they use re, they use racism to justify the condition that they put us in. That's right. Teach, brother Henry. So you know, I want you know, I just want us to see that non-melanated people, who, you know, they 
they claim to be the chosen people. You see, now when you throw that to the child, when you throw that at a black child, when they reading that, they got to conclude that if white is great, I must be less than great. The, a child would do that. That's right. That's the psyche. If white is great and great and, and, and beautiful, then black got to be decadent and ugly. That's just an automatic given. I say. Yeah. So, you know, we, you know, the child run around and say, well, damn, I don't care what I do because I'm already marked as cursed. And believe me, our children can start to think that way. Some yeah. of us, been, some of our generation been brainwashed with that, you know? So, you know, I just mm -hmm. said that to say that, you know, if your belief system hates you, then you can't help but hate yourself and your kind. That's Absolutely. the answer to the question. That's where their the hate come from, the religion. I'm gonna just paint the picture. We can take it and let it alone from there, you know. But the last thing I wanna say on that though, if your oppressor looks like God and the personalities of your belief system look like, uh, how do I put that? Look white, then the system subconsciously, when it's time to attack them, you hesitate thinking that you're attacking God or attacking God's people. Right. Based on your religion. Right, because you constantly look for a God outside of yourself. Exactly, exactly. Because and you, haven't, is, you haven't tapped into your own divinity. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And you know, that, that goes back, you know, um, you know, that, that teaching to say you were born in sin. But yes. we know our comedic teachings, we were born divine. Absolutely, I say. Right, I right. So that, that, that's what we got to do. You know, we got to pick up the right thing. We had drop what we got and pick up something else. But we so love in love with slave master, we think that we can't even exist without them. When we had Black Wall Street, we had Ville neighborhood, we had our own areas that were thriving and prosperous without them. Absolutely, absolutely. So time um, and history has proven that we do better without them. Ashe. Ashe. Okay, um, so moving on to uh, number four. Mm. And I'm going to, I'm going to kind of take my time with this one because it's a little um, packed. <laughs> okay. So have you ever experienced a time that may have led you to cause destruction or violence to your own black folk, but you managed to de-escalate the situation before having to harm another. <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. So if so, explain it. Mm -hmm. However, if you have not been in this circumstance, tell me what you might do to turn the matter around. I hear you. Well, you almost didn't have to throw that last part in there because ain't none of us can live in this society as melanated people and not have some kind of conflict and controversy with our own or with others. Come on with it. Come on with it. You see? Yeah. But uh, to answer your question, I remember uh, I was doing a teaching on um, uh, a concept of what we call, of what the Dogons call Urugu. Yes. And, and there was an African who uh, stated, uh, made a statement of why was I selling my people a lie? Why was I selling my people a lie? Because I'm deceiving them on the concept of Urugu, you know, and it kind of triggered me for a minute because my thought process was like, here come this dumb stuff, and now it's about time to move it up out of here, you know. And <laughs> then I say, no, nah, it's like stay on your square because I remember when I was traveling with the Nation of Islam, we were um, doing a study on mixed emotions and controversy, how to handle them. Yes. And you handle that with, with truth, you know. So, um, you know, he said that. Um, Oh, I know what it was too. And I was paralleling Urugu with the Yak, the story of Yaku, which is okay. the process, you see. Yes. And uh, I had to let him know that these are just parables. Yes. A parable is a story with a lesson. And so you don't have to be believe the story. The story don't have to be true. The ancestors want you to get the lesson, you see. 
Ashay. This is how we talk, you know. So since both of my stories were compatible, showing you the incompleteness and savagery of a particular people, there ain't nothing else to discuss, you see. So, you know, I, I, you know, we got to know that our teachings, they come from what we call a parabolic point. You know, they paint a clear picture. Yes. We talk in pictures. See, if a black person can't picture something, we can't resonate on it. Yes. We got to be able to picture it, you do. See, so I had to let him know, leave the story alone and take the lesson. And from that, he had to sit down. I I, I, think, I think that was excellent. Um, because at the same time, you did not allow your ego, you understand, right. to get in the way of teaching a lesson that needed to be taught, right? Exactly. You know, it was like it bothered me for a minute until the emotion subsided. Right. You and took it in, you took it in, got rid of the emotions and made a comeback. <laughs> I had made the comeback because, yes, ma'am, because the teachings, I didn't know that they were that, because, you know, when you move in on a plane of truth, you don't really think, you just do. Right, absolutely, Ashe. Ashe, you see, so, yeah, so the universe was with me to break that out because now it's like, I welcome conflict and controversy. I, I welcome it from my own or from others. Why? Because I'm going to speak the same truth no matter what. No matter what. Right, right. Because remember, truth truth don't change. Right. What was Absolutely. true today going to be true today, going to be true tomorrow, regardless of what circumstances or laws man can put down. Right. It's going to be true forever. It's going to be true forever. So that's the plane we got to learn to operate on. How you know you got truth? Because you ain't changing. If you have to change your truth in order to conform, it ain't true. I say, I say. That's an excellent point, Brother Henry. Yeah. So my... moving on to um, question five. As a collective community, what strategies or mechanisms must we put in place to end the violence and murder against one another? What, what are your thoughts on that? And you can take your time. I hear you, my sister. That's a deep one there, and but it's a simple solution. And you got to understand the law of what we call cause and effect. Now, most of the time, our leaders and strategists, when they're going after something, they address the symptoms. You address the self-hatred. You address all this, but you don't go after the cause. You mm. know, it's like, it's like, uh, trying to beat a cold, you know, every medication you get take care of the cough, the runny nose, the runny eyes, the headaches, it take care of the symptoms, but it don't take care of what caused you to get the cold. Hmm. So what you have to do is go back and check your immune system because your immune system is weak and that's how you got the cold. So if you don't catch the cold, you won't have the symptoms. Look at so that. our strategy got to address the cause. So once we go after the cause, we'll start to understand that the cause is us. I say. Because because and when I say it's us, all it is is that we've already accepted somebody else's concept of our experience. White people, um, the Euro Gentile wants to tell you how you should handle his oppression of me. Hmm. He, constantly, he don't know my experience, but yet he want to tell me how to identify my experience. And what we do, we bow down to it. You know, um, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad made a statement uh, in the final call many times. He said, the one who controls the diameter of your thinking dictates the circumference of your action. So if you think is small, you're going to have a small action. If your mind is big and vast and universal, you're going to have a universal strategy, you see. So, you know, it, it just come back to the concept, my sister, that we got to put down what they call the hot rock of our oppressor. And let's pick up the ice of our ancestors, because I this say. thing got to stop. This got to stop, my sister. Yeah. Now, so bro, we, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Brother Henry. Go ahead, brother. It's good. Yes, ma'am. I get the roll in my sister. No, it's but okay. It's all good, brother. I, 
I spoke on top of you. Go ahead. Oh, it's all good. But I mean, that's why we doing this though, because it stimulates thought process. And when you get that thought, it's like, bam, I got to get it out. <laughs> <laughs> so right. I understand. I understand. This is how they say, great as we are, it's hard to be humble, my sister. <laughs> I say. You know, and that's why we come together and we do what we do, because we want to continue to edify and educate and empower our people. Yes. And so we have to do that on so many levels. And it takes all of us working together to make that happen. Right. But yes, I want to I want to just ask you another question, uh, Brother Henry, because I know I've seen the work that you have done with young uh you know, young brothers in the I community. I knew was coming with that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, and so with that being said, I want to say that um, I, I feel like it's brothers like yourself who will make this black on black crime thing diminish because I think that when they have strong black positive role models and people that they can look up to and people who won't tell them the truth and somebody that's not going to mislead them and just keep it 1000 with them they respect that more yes right yes, and they i've seen like it in your work i've seen it in your work yes, you know even with helping my nephew out like you did oh no doubt no doubt my sister and you know that's the key to it it's called responsibility Remember, we had a thing where it says it takes a village to raise a child. I say. So when an outsider has to come into your house to deal with something that you produce, it don't mean that it's nothing, something wrong with you. It means that they were called to do a certain thing. And if the universe put them across your path, you need to let that happen. Yeah. You see? And, and, you know, one of the strongest things to get past is the, the, the nurturing nature of the sisterhood toward the man child. Okay, can you, can you give me some examples, Brother Henry? Let's go uh, into that. Okay, uh, example in like, in what respect? In respect that you said about the, the mother and the male, the male child. Oh, okay, yes, ma'am, I can give you some examples. Uh, I had a youngster who, um, was very he's in he's in middle school and that seems to be the age that our children have this uh psychological breakdown okay but i, but I see adolescence that, the adolescent stage but i see it nurturing itself in probably the third grade hmm so you're yes, saying that it starts as early as the third grade uh uh as far as when it's noticeable in the man child's rebelliousness hmm around about okay. the third grade. Remember three in numerology is for a trial or for a test. And that's what that becomes. A child will test the parent to see how far it can go. It's gonna test the teacher to see how far it can go. It's gonna test the father to see how far they are gonna go. You see? So uh, yeah, I had a youngster who was very defiant to his parent, but yet the parent kept trying to buy the child's love. Mm. You see? And uh, I had to sit back because I was emotional on that and condemning the sister when in reality, she's only doing what her nature calls for, which is to nurture. The yeah. man, it's a male energy that has to instill what we call the discipline in the man child. Teach. Because we cut from that certain cloth where after we jack him up, we don't nurture him back up too quick. He got to earn to be in my presence. Right, right. You see? Absolutely. But the, some the, time the, to, to think about, you yeah. know, what he done. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. Exactly. You know, so, you know, I had to paint the picture to the youngster that he got to identify why is he acting out? And most of the time it's because of the male-female division. Yes. And male, female, not from the comedic energy perspective, but from the male, female physical uh, representation, you see. Yes, because that's deep, brother. That's deep. Male, we're talking about 
uh, energies, you know, like my eye, that's female. Yes. You yes. see? So, you, okay, when you want to talk about female, you talk about truth, order, justice, balance, reciprocity. Yes. When, when you talk about male energy, you talk about practical, logical, mathematical discipline. Oh, you brother Henry, you broke that down, brother. <laughs> you it's broke that. You... I don't even know where I'm going. I might be all over the no, place. No, no, just keep on universe. going. You're doing just great. It's the universe talking because we got to take this thing beyond the mental, the mental and physical level and take it to a metaphysical level. Yes. yes. And see, that's the temple of head of roof. This is what page we on now. This is I not see. a it become a way of life that's going to govern your social, political, economic, and spiritual decisions. I say, and you need all that. You need all of that, you see. But what we have to understand is every one of us is nothing more than, as I stated in my opening, a fragmented piece of the whole. So each one of us got a part. So when I'm dealing with the youth, I understand now that was my calling. I don't have any children. But I treat any man, child, or female child to come across my path with a problem. That's my problem. Same here. Same, yes, same way with me, brother. Yes, ma'am. Yes, that's called responsibility. Yes. And these are words that we, as a people, right now, want to get away from because we under a, a, a system that trains us to think individualistic. Hmm. So how are you gonna be? unified when you think an individual that's a conflict that's destruction yes yeah. and then when you melanated when you got a melanated mind moving on a euro gentile page that's insanity and at some point there's going to be an implosion absolutely now you got your black on black crime you exploded from within to destroy your own yes it's Jeez. easy to do Yes, ma'am. So what we're looking at is nothing that we created. We victimized by it, but we don't want to admit we're a victim. Yes. Once you understand you are a victim, then you can come up out of victimization and become the predator if you want to. I say. Yes, ma'am. I say. Yeah. It might seem like voice getting loud, but you hit that, you hit that nerve, <laughs> my sister. No, it, it's all good, brother. That that's what we want. Cause you know, like I said, we we reaching out to the people and the people need to understand. They need to know that, you know, we have all these things, all these obstacles that we have to get over if yes. we ever want to be fully liberated. Mm, that's right. I call so, them impediments. Yeah. Yeah, because see, we can't keep we can't keep playing because we don't have time for that. Mm. You know? So so I uh value the fact, brother, that you always on your square. Uh, I, I just want to say, I know when I had asked you, <laughs> I hope you don't mind me sharing no, this. No, we I, I had asked you uh, to be on the show. <laughs> uh, and you was like, no, I, you know, I, I don't think I'm ready for that. But then right. I know you because I've been That's around right. you long enough to know. I know your commitment. You see what I'm saying? I know your dedication. Yes, and I know you a genuine brother, you know. And yep. um I just want to say do I for always being there for our children, yes, being there for us. Every time you're called on, you you there with no problem. Exactly. Um, and you have served in so many ways for the betterment of our people and for our children. And that's what we need. Oh, yes, ma'am. No doubt. Now, I also have to flip that script and make sure I understand why you pushed me into that demonstration tell the whole story because my <laughs> conscience bothered me for rejecting that demonstration okay when i knew i should have been on it you see right right Just, my spirit wasn't right because i take this thing seriously i don't want to impart nothing to my people that's going to lead to their detriment because that's already there absolutely but see that's why we love each other and we need each other we need each other to survive so with you, when I'm falling off my square, I need you to come in and say, hold on, queen mother. You wow. see what I'm saying? And because we care about each other, we ought to be open to listening to one another, right? And so right. we can help each other do what we have to do for the betterment. Ashe? Ashe. Yes, ma'am. 
Yeah, that, that, that is it right there, you know, because I mean, the whole key to it is that our mission is to uplift fallen humanity. Yes. And once you understand your purpose, then you move according to that purpose. Right, because you called me that mm -hmm. next morning. <laughs> <laughs> I say, I can't. You said, sister, I'm willing to do whatever it is that I need to do. <laughs> yes. Yes, ma'am, you know, but that that's goes back to what I was talking about, a lesson learned. That'll never happen again. I say, I say. Uh, I just what? felt that my spirit wasn't where it should be in order for me to deliver the message that I felt that I should do. But when you make a when a sister make a call to especially to a male, he's supposed to respond. I say, I say. That be the order of the day. So, you know, my conscience just chewed me up and I had to. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Brother Henry, before we get out of here, um, do you have anything else to add? You know, the topic was a really serious topic exactly. that I think that um, is really serious, especially when you talk about the genocide of mm -hmm. our people because the thing of it is if you you know take all of the men and the boys away you know we mm -hmm. can't begin to continue to create families right exactly so, uh the genocide the demise of the black race do you have any closing um things that you want to say about it or um any other points that you want to bring about before we get off the show uh, you always do, my sister, and I'm, I'm honored that you put that down like that because, you know, we always want to leave something on the minds of the people that we call undeniable truth, where regardless of how it hit and hurt, it's got to be an accepted reality. So uh, I'm going with uh, something that I, would, that I was inspired to lay out, and uh, it goes like this. Our current position in this matrix is a process of time. Our sojourn in America is about 460 plus years. And even if it takes that long to escape our captors, somebody got to start the process. The illusion of inclusion has not proven to be a significant factor in alleviating this problem. The universe is instructing us to come up out of this Euro Gentile madness in body, mind, and spirit. And if we refuse to obey, the universe will destroy this one and raise up one that will. And we are producing, we're producing a warrior generation. A generation is born to kill, maim, and destroy. They see that the present generation has relegated them to the bottom rung of the totem pole of humanity. Mm. And they don't have no love, I repeat, they have no love for the tree that produced them. So I say woe to the society and the people that get in their way. They already been labeled as black identity extremists which put them under Homeland Security as a menace to society to justify their genocidal removal. So woe to the people, brothers and others that get in their way because their near, their purpose is to avenge the spirit of our ancestors. I say. I say, I say. And so King Brother Henry, I just want to say do I thank you so much for coming on and sharing with us, giving us your wisdom, your divineness. I appreciate you, brother. You always welcome to come back again. Oh, uh, hopefully call me. <laughs> you can be back on the platform because we're going to continue to educate and edify and empower like we supposed to do. Um, I also want to take this time out to say do I to the producer and the creator of our channels. Uh, uh, not, um, our divine Saber, Pianki, Matula, Nefer, Amin, Ra. Um, and I also want to say do I to our Baba Saber, mm. who is the founder of the Temple of Het Haru. I want to say do it to my parents, Roy and Prince Ella Small, for my existence. I want to say do I to our elders of the Temple of Het Haru, Elder Rini Ankh and Queen Elder Regina Dennis Nana. I want to sure. say do I to Dr. Rikedi Amin for her wonderful teachings of the Metanetter. 
I want to say Dua to Queen of Fool, and I want everyone to stay in love with themselves, stay in love with others, stay Blacktastic, and I want to say Shem Imhotep, go in peace. Ashe. Ashe. Voices of my art. Oh, I do.